Well, it's good to be together online and thank you for joining in. I'm sorry that we can't be together in person as we has, have over these past few months, but we do thank God again for technology that allows us to share together this Sunday morning. Today is the first Sunday of Advent and in a few moments we'll light the Advent wreath and we'll do it from afar. I hope you feel the warmth and, and enjoy the light of the first candle as it is lit. Uh, just a few announcements, um, because we are in this time of uh, suspension, services are suspended and we're looking uh, rather indefinitely, but at least we figure until the 10th of January will be the first service if we're able to begin there. We're anticipating that the health order will be extended over the Christmas time and we want to make plans so that we can still serve you online. We can continue, of course, online with our computers, phones, tablets, all of those ways. And then those messages will all be posted to YouTube. And then, of course, they are available to those without the computer, uh, available on radio, 93.7 FM, the voice of the shoe shop. And that's every Sunday evening at 7 o'clock. YouTube, you can always search David Rittersgaard channel. And, of course, the spelling of my name is there in your bulletin. Unfortunately, we won't, weren't able to do our cozy tree, but we are making up hygiene packs um, uh, with hopefully some treats in them that we can give to those on Christmas Day that come for the Christmas meal outside. Uh, tithes and offerings, thank you again for your faithfulness to the Lord and to the church. And um, please continue to send those by post is the, the safest, the best way uh, to do that. I think those are all of the announcements. Let us light the Advent candle and then continue in our worship, prayer, and the Word. Today is the first Sunday of Advent, the Sunday in which we recall the hope we have in Christ. The prophets of Israel all spoke of the coming of Christ, of a Savior who would be born, a king in the line of David. They spoke of how he would rule the world wisely and bless all nations. On Christmas Day, the Christ of our hope was born. On Good Friday, the Christ of our hope died. On Easter Day, the Christ of our hope rose from the dead. He then ascended into heaven. On the last day, the Christ of our hope will come again to establish his kingdom over all things on the earth. As followers of Christ, we await his return. And we light this candle to remember that as he came to us humbly in the manger at Bethlehem and gave light to the world, so he is coming again in power to deliver his people. We light this candle to remind us to be alert and to watch for his return. Let us pray. Loving God, we thank you for the hope you give us. Help us prepare our hearts for the Lord's coming. Bless our worship. Help us live holy and righteous lives. We ask this in the name of our Savior, born in Bethlehem. Amen. Amen. We continue now in our worship, prayer, and the scripture reading.
Father, we thank you today for your goodness, your love, your care for us over this past week. And we commit the week ahead of us, O God, to your purposes and to your plan. Lord, we thank you for the hope that we have in the Lord Jesus Christ. And we thank you that he is our high priest who makes intercession before the Father for each of us. And today we come with many requests, O Lord. We think of Mike and Heather for their great-grandson, Graylin, and their granddaughter, Keisha. Lord, we pray your blessing on this tiny baby. And we pray that you would just give strength, O Lord. Minister, O God. Let him grow in the nurture, the admonition of the Lord Jesus Christ and trust you with his life. We pray for Keisha also for healing, Lord, that you'd minister to her. We think of Vi's family member, Pat, needing emergency surgery, and we pray that all will go well there and quick healing will come. For Carol's brother, Jim, for healing, strength, and comfort. June's neighbor, Sandy, for Norman, for Howard, for Kathleen, Rick, for Jacqueline and Debbie, Micah, Irene, June, Muriel, Chuck and Carol, for each one, O God, we pray that you would undertake and minister to them, O Lord. Bring healing, O God, bring your strengths and encourage their hearts, O Lord. We thank you. We think of Karen today and pray that you would bless her, O God, minister to her, watch over, protect, and make her a blessing in many ways. We think of Randy Collier today, who is known to many here in the Crossroads family. And we, we pray that you would bring healing and recovery to him after a horrific motor accident. Minister to him and, and also surround Bonnie with your care and your love at this difficult time. We think of churches in our community and we think of the SDA Seventh-day Adventist Church particularly. We pray that you would bless them, O God. And as all churches are under suspension at this time, Lord, we pray that you would use them still to share the good news of the Lord Jesus Christ and also to minister to your people. Watch over each one of their members and protect them, O God, in this difficult time. Father, we thank you for your people, for tithes and offerings that they have given and that they are about to give. Lord, we pray your blessing. Help us to steward each of these funds with wisdom. And Lord, that each coin would bring honor and glory to your name. And in a few moments, as we open the word, we pray that you would speak to each of our hearts too. Help us, O oh God, to hear what you're speaking to us individually as families and what you're speaking to us as a church. We thank you for the hope that you have given to the world through our Lord Jesus Christ. Help us to be ambassadors, to share your love, to share your grace, to share that hope with everyone we meet. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Come.
sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favoured. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favour with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants for ever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be? Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin. The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come on you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age, and she who was said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month, for no word from God will ever fail. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. At that time, Mary got ready and hurried to a town in the hill country of Judea, where she entered Zechariah's home and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leapt in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. In a loud voice she exclaimed, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child you will bear. But why am I so favoured that the mother of my Lord should come to me? As soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in my womb leapt for joy. Blessed is she who has believed that the Lord would fulfil his promises to her. And Mary said, my soul glorifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Saviour, for he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. From now on, all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me. Holy is his name. His mercy extends to those who fear him from generation to generation. He has performed mighty deeds with his arm. He has scattered those who are proud in their inmost thoughts. He has brought down rulers from their thrones, but has lifted up the humble. He has filled the hungry with good things, but has sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel, remembering to be merciful to Abraham and his descendants forever, just as he promised our ancestors.' 